Okay, um, maybe I'll talk. <laughs> so, um, Meg Wolf, who also goes by Shannon, her alter ego, and I'm Taisha Paget, who I also go by Filibuster, um, though she never really fully made an appearance today. <laughs> um, so, we don't really have a name for the type of performance we just did, but basically we're dance artists who um, generate movement ideas through materials and through a type of transformation of, of common objects and common ideas and common gestures, common movements. Um, and um, also, as you see, you're interested in blurring the frame of what's the performance and what's not the performance. So as you probably imagine, for those who were here early on, you had a feeling that we were just playing just hanging out, we were setting up, but we were actually already beginning our performance very early on. And those that came in more right at 7.30 probably saw, you probably felt like you were just like jumping in in the middle of something that already started. Um, we do want you guys to have a physical experience because we think that watching is um, only one way of taking in ideas, particularly in movement. So you won't be sitting for much longer, but um, do you know what time it is? 7.53. Okay, fantastic. Um, but before we jump into this other realm, I just want to find out if you guys have any questions or if anything came up for you while watching. And um, yes, please. been on stage but I feel like um, I feel like it's something that I want to go out into the world um, and see how that goes um, kind of as research I guess for performance um, but maybe just for the hell of it um, and um, and Shannon has been a character that's been developing a little bit over the past year in different contexts um, uh, and so um, there's a little developing a little backstory um, of like yeah she she's uh, from uh, I don't remember now somewhere in Texas um, <laughs> but um, anyway yeah so mostly just on stage so far Um, I think that, uh, in s well, yeah, in some way, um, that, uh, in some way, just like putting on the wig allows other things to happen, and um, but that it's, uh, yeah, there's a specific character that's coming through that, so which. Um, I think similar in some ways, but also very different. Um, my, I actually never really use the word alter ego. I feel like my um, filibuster is a more of a consciousness um, that's embodied in a figure. And I, I developed this character filibuster as a way of answering, or actu actually as a way of asking what start to feel like impossible questions, like um, what does it mean to um, um, put side by side um, uh, shaker dances? Are you familiar with the shakers at all? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What does it mean to put shaker dances next to Zumba? And what does it mean to think of something from the past um, existing at the same time as something from something imagined from the future. And I feel like as my own person, it was hard to ask those questions without getting wrapped up in like, oh, well, it doesn't make sense. And like, I have to like find the right like conceptual and historical argument to make sense of it all. Um, if I ask it through filibuster in, in the world and realm of, and consciousness of filibuster, 
the, the universe is flattened and there's no sense of a timeline. And so all of these things can be put in, in the same stew and, and interact, if that makes sense, <laughs> sort of, yeah. And then, um, yeah, okay. Thank yeah, thank you, that's a great question. Yes. Cool, cool. Have you ever done any work with like improvised music, like collaborating? Because I'm a jazz musician, so. Yeah, and actually that's really fantastic to, um, to, uh, to be an improvising body working with improvisational sound. Um, like I feel like the possibilities, compared to dancing, because this happens a lot, improvising to set music. Mm -hmm. um, when you've got the when the sound element is has a possibility of going all over the place, then that gives more support to the dance experimentations. Have you ever worked with dancers? I haven't. No, I've thought about it before. But. Cool. Next, I think your hand was up soon earlier, and then. Oh, we have set things, yeah. Also, mm -hmm. we have we have said things also, yeah. Yeah, and and I would say actually, um, like our background, um, growing up as dancers, and even perhaps I'm speaking for myself. I'm not sure for you. Um, in our early dance making, it was all set because that's what we were to told was the way to make dances, um, and that was just yeah. Um, much more easily digestible, easy to digest, easy reading. <laughs> and, um, and I feel, at least from my perspective, working in an open form like this um, allows me, um, it's a different type of creative outlet, and it also helps me um, expand the possibilities of what, what it means to be on stage and what it means to be a live body moving in front of other live bodies. But I, I perform a lot of set choreographed works as well, and Meg has in her past as well. Yeah, and I think also um, that um, not so much this one, but uh, in some, some improvised works that there are, um, you know, there's structures around, you know, I'm going to do a certain work with a certain idea for a certain amount of time or just in this part of the space or um, so that there's there are frames around it so it's not just like, oh, whatever um, or over time in rehearsal they rehearse improvisations as well that um, you know you develop certain material that you find that you want to work with in as in a similar way I think with with jazz, maybe music that you have a, a score that you go off of um, and around. So, um. yeah. And I'll say too that we, we came in with a score. It was a very loose score, but it was abandoned <laughs> immediately because the conditions, like we, ex we thought that we would come into an empty room and it'd be quiet and we could kind of meditate and like move very <laughs> fluidly into movement. And then there's this total other scene happening that involved this ladder that we decided to keep. Um, people were hanging <laughs> on the ladder and something around and it was beautiful and so we just built on that. So like what you saw was a product of what was already at play in the room, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Um. Um, I was visiting a friend in Berlin, um, and I did a performance there. It was sort of in a similar sort of studio performance, um, but uh, mostly just wandering around and looking at things. <laughs> so, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, well, I, I don't speak German, so um, so that limited <laughs> my conversation during the day, um, and uh, yeah, and not and not not knowing people there, and so I get, it was a very kind of quiet time in a way for me. Yeah.
good question. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, hmm. I don't know if I can answer. I don't know if I have a message. Working with what you've got in the moment. Um, being open to change. Yeah, that's a really fantastic question. I think um, there there wasn't a specific, like, identifiable message and more of a um, an invitation, I would say. And I think the, which art, you know, like, s some work has a message and some work is, the message is an invitation to the audience. And I feel like it was more um, an invitation for you all to, um, experience something that d doesn't have a set structure and to see like what what do you do with that information and and t um, an invitation to consider um, some different possibilities of what dance is I, I know you guys um, are studying a lot and exposed to a lot of of different um, dance traditions and and notions of performance but in a broader you know sense of things what we're given about dance is that it's like so you think you can dance, like these very specific codified forms and expectations of bodies. So I think this was an invitation for you to consider the possibility that performance could be this. Which for some people, they might walk away saying that was just like a big hot mess. And that's valid, right? Because that's what they walk away f um, with. And I guess the question for them is, um, what does hot mess equal? <laughs> you and why do you arrive at that answer does that answer your question <laughs> okay fantastic okay is that a hand no okay that was a <laughs> head <laughs> this. oh good, good 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 okay so yes okay go for it Okay, I'll try. <laughs> how's it going over there, guys? Um, um, I'll say okay. I'll try to be really brief with this, and then and then you go. Um, I so mine. I wasn't interested in in creating an alter ego or archetype or whatever, um, but I was invited to. Um, something called the Queer Arts Festival, to perform work for the Queer Arts Festival. And there was a central question that the curators of this performance um, posed to all of the artists. And, um, well, we were supposed to answer a question, this is, this is what I want. What do you want? And, and the first thing that came to me was um, the capacity to speak. And um, that that answer came from this realization that as a dancer, like as my own practice has been, um, as, a dan as my own dance practice and work has um, been moving outside of conventional performance spaces into galleries and public sphere, um, I felt that the one thing that wasn't shifting was my, was this. That I can be so expressive with my body and go in all these different directions, but speaking was the one thing that was always and so I decided to make a work that was just me talking, 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 talking. And thinking about that idea, I started thinking like, oh, what is that? That reminds me of like filibusters. And can someone give a definition of a filibuster? Yes, please. Fantastic. 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 And so, and so I decided, like, my speaking became a type of filibuster. And I was looking into filibuster, and um, something that I came across was um, the Missouri Compromise and the Kansas Nebraska Act. I am not a historian, so please, you can help me out with this. But it was this, well, it was this moment, a pivotal uh, moment in history for African Americans because there was a lot of debate about um, um, African Americans' relationship to land and thus relationship to slavery. 
Am I good? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Um, and so this fill, this the idea of 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 being speaking a filibuster got me wrapped up in all these different historical um, threads, and and the other thing that I started to contemplate was the fact that I was this body, like my neutral body, was trying to get at these ideas in a very like I'm going to be neutral and the ideas are going to be out here. And I just start to think, what, what happens if, instead of the ideas being out there, what if I'm the embodiment of the ideas, if that makes sense? And so what I start to create, compose, was this character, this trans-historical character who spoke from this particular subjectivity and historical moment in the present moment. Does that make sense at all? OK, OK. And then, and then as I continued developing it, filibuster started to become this kind of like, magic dust fairy that kind of informed other works. Um, and I'm also really interested in magic, but that's a whole other set of <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, kind of similarly, um, uh, Shannon was sort of, uh, uh, I was invited to do a performance in a, in a gallery setting, it, well, it was kind of, it was a gallery kind of party thing that had kind of a 80s, it was um, Anne Magnuson's um, <laughs> party, and um, so she wanted some go-go dancers, um, and uh, I mean, I've never, I haven't really ever been a go-go dancer, but my friends have, and so we, there were three of us, and uh, so we did a little thing, and that was Shannon's first public appearance. Um, and uh, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, she's kind of developed from there. She's just a, a, a slacker, kind of stoner, kind of, um, yeah. Um, and, uh, and so that's where that started. And there have been a couple of other. So, and this recently I developed a longer piece working more with the character and speaking um, again similarly. Like that was the first time I had uh, used, I had decided to talk on stage. So, um, so working with the character allowed me to do that. Well, right now we're working in Los Angeles, um, and uh, um, performing in different venues there. With uh, I've doing um, small solo pieces, large group works, some improvisation, some uh, more set work. Um, before I was in Los Angeles, I lived in New York for 12 years and danced with some independent choreographers there as well as doing my own work. Um, kind of similar. Um, I started dancing late, quote unquote. I started dancing at 17 or 18. Um, but where I went to school, it was a very open program, and so I started dancing with anyone who would ask me, and that was in Santa Cruz, and then I moved to New York and danced with some small companies there. And in Los Angeles, I, I dance, um, I tour with um, one choreographer right now, his name is David Rusev, I don't know if that means anything um, to you. And then um, sometimes, in, the, in my past, I've also um, worked with a visual artist named Kelly Nipper in a more like cross-disciplinary work and we performed in Switzerland and um, Italy and in the U.S. and New York and Los Angeles all around. Does that answer? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Moving? Moving.
everybody. This is this is really strange. <laughs> so um, I would like to invite you all to um, get out of your chairs. Yes. I promise it won't. Well, anyway, I'm not going to promise anything. I sense some hesitation here. Yeah, come into the center of the room. Start with something really um, basic, simple. Stand up and just start walking. Just start walking. Okay, let's start walking. Start walking. Start walking. Just starting to walk. No talking. you so noticing what's in front of you uh, check it out so okay there's an exit sign there's a pipe there's lights on the ceiling there's a screen there's a projector there's metal chairs there's a striped sweater there's a uh, mug on the floor, a phone, a plate. So even just begin, please join, um, and as you're walking, you can speak these things to yourself as you're seeing them, tambourine, a wig, a boot, a jar, yellow paper, see what you notice. I'm uh, seeing a lot of turquoise color. Um, stripes, uh, screen. So now facing, try and describe what you, what's behind you as you're walking forward. So I remember that there was a screen and some paper and there's chairs on the side and turn around and go the other direction and try and describe what was behind you. <laughs> okay, and let's just stop wherever you are, close your eyes, and just go through a little inventory where you are of what you saw. Um, <laughs> uh, metal chairs, mm, pipe on the ceiling, projector, um, striped skirt, a telephone, uh, glasses. Um, so just tick through things, the curtains, uh, maroon curtain, piano, oh, there's, yeah, there's a piano, um, the thing on the wall over there. Yeah, even there. Um, okay. And so open your eyes and check around the room and notice the things that you forgot. Um, okay, there's there's lights on the ceiling. Um, there's a sign that says text drop number, uh, emergency exit, the clock on the wall, the clock there's an orange uh, extension cord on the ceiling. 
ceiling. Um, there's people laughing in the corner. There's two rows of chairs over there. There's only one over there. Um, okay, close your eyes again. Um, add things into your inventory. Um, so you can just let that go now, forget about it, and focus in on your breathing. So keep your eyes closed. <clears throat> and just notice, you know, are you breathing fast or slow or is it shallow breathing? Can you breathe a little deeper or lower? You don't have to change it, but just notice how it's going. And notice how you're standing. Um, are you leaning more to one side? Are you? Are your feet spread wide or close together? Um, and do a little scan of your body in a similar way um, from, the, from the feet up. And bring your attention to the top of your head and just tilt your chin forward and notice how that changes things in your body. And then just kind of tilt it back a little bit. Don't crunch your neck or anything um, and see how that feels. And drop an ear to one shoulder. And the other way. And see if that feels different from one side to the other. And how is your breathing going? <laughs> is it any different from before? Do you want to? Okay. And um, shift your weight into your right foot and just shake out your left leg. And then shift your weight into your left leg and sh shake out your right. And then both feet on the ground. Extend your right arm forward and just shake it out, 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 out. Don't hit anyone, and then let it go. And then same thing with the other arm, just shaking it out in whatever direction you can without hitting anyone. And then let it go. And we're going to go back to our right hand. And you're going to, with that internal focus, hopefully you cultivated with Meg's um, how Meg was leading you, we're going to t take your focus to your right fingertips hanging down to your side. And as slowly as you can, you're going to begin to extend the fingers out and up until your arm is all the way up to your side. And your focus is going to follow the entire time. And we're going to, you, as you move, you don't want to be the last person and you also don't want to be the first person, right, to get the arm all the way up here. So we have to have your own internal awareness as well as an awareness of the group around you. Yeah? Make sense? 
Okay. I oh definitely open for certain. Thank you. We'll try it with eyes closed next week. <laughs> okay. Right arm and begin. You don't want to be first, you don't want to be last, and you also, I forgot to mention, want to be moving constantly. You don't want to be first, you don't want to be last, and you want to be moving constantly. Open your awareness to the bodies around you. And just as slowly as you raise the hand high, we're going to take it down. Again, you don't want to be first, last, and you want to keep moving constantly. And as you're doing this, notice where your focus goes. Notice how difficult it is to just keep your focus on the task at hand. Once the arm gets down, hold on to the focus that you've just cultivated. It's going to be challenging. Hold on to the focus that you've just cultivated. Try your hardest and just take a quick walk around the room. Notice if you feel any different this time of walking around compared to the first time you walked around the room. Okay. Okay, you guys. So pause. So we're going to go into, we just have a little bit of time left. We're going to go into a free write exercise that will take us into a movement exercise. We have a handful of pencils and some paper. If you have your own pencil or pen, that would be fantastic because I don't think we have enough for everyone. So if you've got something, please grab it. If not, I'll find some for you all.
While we're waiting for something to arrive, more pencils and pens, do you have any questions, anything that came up from what we just did, why we did that? Why did we do that? <laughs> why do you think we did it? It was energy, it was a flow. It was like water and like atoms uh -huh. and fish. And now you have this whole new relationship, maybe a different way of thinking about your body potentially? I, I mean, mean like, it's a lot more movable than I thought. Say it again? It moves more than I thought. Your body moves more than you thought? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> any, other, any other thoughts on that? <laughs> No, 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 no. Huh? Yes, please. To understand the space, like the space and how many people is in the space, what do you have in the space? Great. So you guys, so this was a really great, great question that was that was posed, and the second answer has come up. Why did we do that to understand the space, to understand the other bodies in space? Was there the one other thing you mentioned? People, like how many people, people is in the space? Yeah. Who are they? Yeah, so cultivation of, of our bodies and then a cultivation of the space around our bodies. And that's dancing is riding in space. So we were basically tuning our bodies to begin moving through space. Yes, please. I've been going so fast, I kept opening it to everyone. My mom was the boys, the girl, I just kept opening it to people. Walking around? Yeah, I was going too quickly, I kept opening it to everyone. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's obvious. Yeah, that's obvious. writing? Yes, no? No. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, writing. So basically, I'm going to um, call start. And when I call start, you're going to put your pen, pencil to the paper, and you're going to begin writing. 
and you writing like words whatever you writing yeah anything that comes out of your anything that comes up like you words words oh yes okay art school yes words Are we reading these? <laughs> no don't don't worry about that I don't trust you. Okay, no. It will not be shared. It will not be shared. So, so you guys, so what what happens? Has anyone done an exercise like this before? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you might know that you're going to you're going to have like blanks and some like writer's block. What you do at that moment is you just keep repeating the last word you wrote and 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 until another thought stream comes up. The point is to Resist editing yourself. There's no stopping and erasing. Like, ah, I didn't say that right. It's just about <laughs> total free flow. But yeah? It has to be like a, a whole paragraph or can it just word? <laughs> Completely <laughs> random. <laughs> total non sequitur, whatever comes up. This, is, this will make sense when you're in the middle of the activity. Do you keep on writing the last one? Yeah, so if you reach, if you reach a, a mental block, just keep rewriting the last word until another stream comes up. Does that make sense? Are we all on the same page? We're all out of paper. Mara, I'll trade you paper. Okay, here we go. Why do you need a new paper? Two minutes. Yeah. This is going to be a two-minute writing experience. Are you ready?
we have five minutes. That's okay. I okay. just want to give that to you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Have you all selected three words or phrases? What's that? Three. Three in, three in total. Okay, once you've, got, once you've got your information, please stand up. And make sure, um, yeah, okay, that's good. Rise, rise, rise. And I'm going to count you off. So just remember your number. <laughs> remember your number. One, two, <gasps> three, four, five, six. One, yes. sorry. Three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Are you with us or you what? One, two, three, four, five. Raise your hand if you don't have a number. I have number. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Four. Okay, are you, you have a number? Okay. Ones gather here. Twos gather here. Threes gather here. Fours gather here. Fives here. Sixes there. Have you found your family? Have you found your family? Yes, yes, yes. Raise your hand ones. Raise your hands twos. Threes. Fours. Fives. Six, 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 six. Okay, fantastic. So this is what we're going to do, you guys. We're going to come up with a, a sentence of movement. So we have to do this really fast. This is not award-winning choreography, yeah? This is just same as a free association riding. You're going to go with your first impression. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to read. You're going to go whatever, stand in a circle. You'll go in order, uh, whatever direction of the circle. And... Um, one person is going to read, they're going to share one, you're going to choose of the three, you're going to choose your favorite word or phrase. You're going to throw it out to the group, and each person is going to decide a movement for that word or phrase. The person who, who owns the word or phrase gets to decide which one is set. So everyone's going to throw out, like, say, go ahead, give, give me one when of yours. When did I actually start? Okay, that's a hard one. Okay, do, no. uh, <laughs> do I know? Do I know? Okay, what first come? What what action comes to your mind when you hear the phrase? Do what? Uh, do I know? Go. Yes. <laughs> and okay, and then you choose one. Yeah. So she just chose. What did you choose? What did you choose? Do it again. And then everyone has to do that. So everyone, get it in your body. Get that action in your body. Make sure you have all of it. And then you'll go to the next person. Does that make sense? You want to remember everything that's chosen. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Yes? yes. Okay, you have three minutes to do this. <laughs> Begin. Okay, you guys have to stand. You guys have to stand up. You have to stand up. I'm sorry.
90 seconds remaining. 90 seconds. No, you're only choosing. You have you you enter with three, but you only choose one to share. No, but oh, so everyone in the group shares. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Is that clear? Everyone, that was that was a, a really long three minutes. Yeah, it was. Yeah, okay. Okay, so that's that's the end of that very long three minutes. That's the end of the very long three minutes. So what we're gonna do? Hey guys, can I have your attention? Thanks. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So we're just going to go around the room and just see what we have. I think there are also different interpretations of what the exercise was, which is fantastic. So let's have group four start. And, and you guys, so we'll do, um, 
because applause gets really wonky, after every person goes, we'll just do one, two, three, clap. Very simple, very egalitarian. Okay. And maybe with your, without your, with your papers on the ground, yeah? Okay. Group four. better. One, two, three. Much better. Oh, I meant to clap, but you're doing what I'm doing. That's fantastic. Okay. Let's have group five. So, so the important thing here is that you give us a very clear ending so we know when it's ending. And maybe also a very clear beginning so we know when it's beginning. This is not group five. This is group group one. We're going way out of order. Let's give them, their, let's give them our focus. Okay, here we go. Fantastic. Let's give them our focus. Thank you. Group, group three. Okay, let's give group three our focus and attention.
Five. Group five. Group six. Group six. Okay. All focus on group six. So I found it really interesting that within those very wide parameters, there were very there were different expressions of what it meant to perform your phrase. Um, I saw that especially with the this group here that chose to deal with being in the center by forming a circle all facing in. Um, we had the first group that had like this kind of like popcorn um, expression, like one person's like yeah yeah yeah, and the other there's some people in the back that are like I don't know going on here and and that all becomes part of the performance um, I would love for you to just we're, we're out of time but I would love for you to just throw out a couple of um, thoughts or impressions you got from the different groups different um, interpretations of the exercise yeah Different personalities come out through the movement. Yeah. yeah, very good. Other thoughts, observations? Other thoughts over here? <laughs> Quiet corner. <laughs> Um, and so, of course, we, we're out of time, but there are lots of different um, ways we could continue expanding these ideas and breaking you guys up. We had an idea of having one person from each group move together as a new group to create a new collective where everyone has a different movement vocabulary and to see what that would look like together in space or to see what happens if, okay, we're moving, but now we have to take this action and travel it around the room. So you can start um, building work from very simple, rudimentary, elemental ideas and then just begin to add layers into that to um, create different ways of, of communicating and, and um, shaping meaning into those physical actions, blah, blah, blah. Final thoughts, Meg, oh. Final thoughts. Um, thank you all for your attention and this in the evening after probably a full day, I'm sure. And uh, 
for having us here. Thank you, Nancy. And Thank you. Should I Thank give you the you. paper? Thank you so much.